What's up guys, Sean here. Today, I'm gonna be sharpening the Spider Koyu Jimbo 2. This is the DLT exclusive in CPM 20 CV. So, let's get to it. First, we gotta get this thing clamped up. Now that is clamped in there very nice and sturdy. Next thing we're gonna do is mark our edge with the green Sharpie. Next thing we're gonna do is grab our first stone which is going to be the 140 grit KME Gold Series Diamond. Hi. Go ahead and place this in my stone holder. So we're at 17. Let's see where it falls on the Sharpie. All right, looks like that is going to be perfect. Now, I'm going real nice and easy. This is with zero pressure whatsoever. No pressure at all being applied here. Alrighty, so we are looking good, looking good. We have no Sharpie at the bottom of the edge. Go ahead, flip this over. And you want to feel for a burr, which I feel the burr, so we're in good shape. Looking good, looking good. <clears throat> All right, we have a burr across this whole entire side. We're gonna go super light. We're just trying to knock this burr down.
Now we are more than ready for our next stone. Now we are moving on to the 300 grit. Put our Sharpie back on here. Now I started this video yesterday and we're finishing up today. Uh, so first things first, we need to mark out our edge. Get it clamped in there really nice and tight. Give her a little flip, mark this side off. Now uh, if anyone watching happens to have an extra angle cube laying around that they would like to donate to the channel that would be very appreciated very very awesome i could definitely use one of those right just, now it's just nice to know exactly what you're working with i'm gonna take my stone holder and we're moving on to 600 grit diamond Want to be real, real light. And see how I'm sweeping across as I push in. That will really make a big difference later when we are trying to get a nice, pretty mirror. Um, this helps keep your grip pattern nice and even and kind of all together. So, yeah. Rover. Now on this side, my bevel was a little bit smaller than the other side. So I gotta work it just a teeny bit more than the other side in order to even it out. If we want nice symmetrical bevels. up and across from the heel to the tip hopefully you guys can see that well we're looking really good go ahead and give it a flip feel for your burr yep have our burr so what i do Mark the edge again. Put 
Oops. All right. Yeah, I think I definitely need a new Sharpie. We're gonna be starting on this side. Put my 600 back in here. We're moving on to the 1500 grit. KME Gold Series Diamond. Put this bad boy in my stone holder. Heel to tip very lightly. Uh, if one part of the be bevel looks a little bit smaller than another, for instance, the tip area and right here looks a little bit smaller than back here. So as we get out towards the tip, we're gonna just add a little bit of pressure to help widen that um, bevel. When you add pressure, it forces the knife to lean down just a hair and that actually drops your angle. So uh, and a lower angle means wider bevel. So that's how that works out. Right, tip the heel just like that, and we can do some edge trailing strokes. That just means you're pulling it down away from the edge. All right, give her a flip. There we go from the heel to the tip. Do edge leading, so we're pushing into the edge, and we are going across from the heel to the tip. And without picking it up, then without lifting the stone, we are gonna pull back towards us and sweep back across to the heel. So we go in from the heel to the tip, and from the tip to the heel, we're coming back towards us. And then you're gonna get really, really light. You're gonna start going really, really light. The lighter amount of pressure you use, the finer your scratch pattern will get. And also it will allow for the absolute minimum um, change of angle due to anything leaning in the clamp or anything like that. So the least amount of pressure possible is going to be your most precise and most clean type of um, scratch pattern and just your whole edge in general. This 1500 right here is our last step before we start getting into a mirror. So you really, really, really want to have this nice and refined before we go on to our Columbia Gorge resin bonded diamonds. That's looking good. Feeling good. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm going from the tip to the heel, pushing in. And then from the heel to the tip, we're pulling away. Very, very little pressure. It's really just the weight of the stone. My finger underneath the tip right here so I can't roll off of it. Something I always like to do. 
especially when you get to this point, but it's helpful all throughout the sharpening process. Flip her over. All right, now we have it all nice and refined. We're gonna do one pass per side and flip. One pass flip and we're only going from the heel to the tip one pass flip Now I'm going so light, I'm literally taking weight off of the stone. I just have my middle finger underneath it here and my this finger on top to help make sure it doesn't roll. But I'm literally lifting up on the uh, weight to relieve the weight off of the blade. I just had someone asking me the other day, how do you get a mirror polished finish with a 10 micron stone, which is approximately 2000 grit? Well, this is how. It's all about the amount of pressure you are using. And it also has a lot to do with my method of sweeping across from the heel to the tip, or it can be tip to heel, doesn't matter, but you just wanna stick with the same thing. Just going back and forth, doing one pass and flip, um, that really, really will help take your edge to the next level of sharpness. Now, it's not necessary to do this many repetitions, but it does make a difference. And it, it just all depends on, you know, what level of perfection are you trying to hit? All right, guys. So that's gonna be it for the 1500 stone. Pop this bad boy out. Put it away in our nice stone holder where it can stay safe. Then we are grabbing the 10 micron Columbia Gorge Stone Works resin bonded diamond stone. Now this is ultimately gonna do the same exact thing as a 10 micron lapping film would. But the cool thing about this is it's a stone. It's not a film that's gonna wear out. And also, it can be used both edge leading and edge trailing. So you use this just like, you know, any other stone. And it's gonna last forever. You only have to buy it once and they're $25 a piece. Just this 10 micron alone will start getting us a mirror. If you get the 10 micron and the five micron, you will be able to get mirror polished, mirror finish edges on anything. So let's get to it. Set this down. Now, these Columbia Gorge Stones are just a hair thicker. So, what we're gonna do, we, in order to find our angle, since I don't use an angle cube, we are going to raise this up from 17 to 17 and a half. We are only raising it half a degree. Now, what we're gonna do, we have the edge marked back out. 
we are going to go across the same way that we were with the 1500 extremely extremely lightly and then we're going to come back away from it sweeping down back towards us okay then we're going to analyze our edge okay it is taking it away just down at the bottom so we are going to drop this back down to 17 because if it's only taking it off down at the apex that means you are too steep so in this case we might not even have to adjust it let's try this again remember very very little pressure Once I find the angle with these Columbia Gorge stones, I like to do little short strokes forward and back. Very, very light pressure. You know, almost like I'm, I'm really just polishing it now. Looking good, looking good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and flip it. Mark our edge. All right, so this should be dead on for this side as well. Very nice guys, very nice. Yes, we were dead on. Oh. See that? No marker down at the base or at your apex. Very clean. Perfect. Go ahead and finish the rest of this side. So ultimately what's going on right now, I'm going forward and backward and I'm also going left and right all at the same time and I'm doing little short strokes you can do longer strokes short strokes whatever you want to do there is no specific way that you have to do this but this is what I like to do and it works good for me um, if something different works better for you then go ahead and you know stick with what you think works best for you and that's the cool thing about sharpening is you never stop learning um, I'm learning new new things tips and tricks and advice all kinds of stuff from people that are you know veterans compared to me you know on regular basis so it's one of the cool things about sharpening is there is just so much to learn and you always will be improving and you will always be learning. So when I'm coming over near this tip, I was holding it like this, but then I'm gonna hold it on top of here and if you have a nice tight pinch on this, it can't twist off of your edge like that. You want to hold it so it does not, cannot turn. So that's why I'm pinching it hard. Because see, if I, see, if I pinch it loose, then, or if I pinch it loose, it can turn and roll off easy. If I pinch it nice and hard, it is much more difficult for me to roll off the edge. That's a little tip and trick that can be very useful sometimes. Especially at this point in the game, you do not want to be making any stupid mistakes to where you have to start all over again. 
That's why I always say you don't want to get into a knife sharpening when you are short for time. This is something you want to do when there is no rush, when you can just relax and take your time because that's how you're going to get the best results. When you are rushed, that's when little stupid mistakes happen. And a lot of times they can be, you know, you can redeem yourself from the mistake. It can be fixed um, to where it's acceptable, but it's, you know, often can't be fixed to where it's as good as it could have been without starting back over. So I like to, you know, focus and take my time and do it once and get it right the first time rather than you know, have to start all over and get frustrated because that's no fun. Nobody enjoys that. Just be able to start seeing that edge um, reflect because it is quickly um, becoming a mirror and we are still on the 10 micron so that just goes to show you right there how effective these stones are all right so i'm gonna feel and see if i, I at this point i really shouldn't have much of a burr anywhere besides a micro burr so when i rub my finger underneath i shouldn't feel a big wire grabbing the skin on my fingertip it should just be extremely faint if anything so i felt it and it's feeling good so now that i've you know done my back and forth kind of polishing routine now at this point we are going to do our one pass and flip You really want to do this at the end of every single progression. This helps even everything out perfectly symmetrical from side to side. All right, now we're going to do a edge trailing pass coming down towards us as I pull in the stone away from the knife same thing on this side when you do that be sure or be careful not to let the stone come off your edge because if that happens and the rod smacks down on your edge you might get a chip and you certainly will get a little deformation which will not be good. All right, now we're going to go tip to heel. Still edge trailing. That's going to help us even out this finish. All right, guys, see how we're looking. As you can see, starting to get a nice mirror let's check the other side oh yeah very nice all right so i got a flipper and we are going to move on to our last stone which is 
the Columbia Gorge Stoneworks U.S. Resin Bonded Diamond 5 Micron Motherfucking Stone. Guys, do yourself a favor and get yourself some of these. They work fucking great. They're not picky. They're not hard to use. You don't have to, you know, only do edge trailing. You use this just like a freaking stone and it does the job that it does exactly what you're trying to do. It will give you a mirror edge super fucking easy. That's just what it does. So, yeah, guys, stop bullshitting and get yourself some of these. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. And so it's, it's a smart investment, you know, here it's $25 a stone. $50 is less than you would spend on a set of lapping films. And this is going to last and it's going to do a better job. It, you see how quickly that went from a scratch finish to a fucking mirror, like literally so easy. Do yourself a favor and get these. No, I'm not sponsored by these people. I am not affiliated with them. I have no incentive to talk them up and, you know, recommend their product other than the fact that I thoroughly am impressed with these and I think they are worth every single dollar of my hard earned money that I spent on these. And, you know, if I had to do it over again, I would get these overlapping films any day of the week. Any day of the week. Because not only is it going to last longer, pretty much last forever, it also works quicker because diamonds are always going to cut faster than any type of um, abrasive film. I don't care how high tech it is, diamonds are always going to be more efficient. They're going to get the job done faster. All right, guys, I am back from my fly killing adventures. I got them motherfuckers. They are gone. So now I can proceed to finish this beautiful, beautiful edge. Looking good. We are looking good to this side.
<coughs> all right, so I'm gonna check all over for a burr. I don't really feel in one. Let's mark the edge out one last time. Now we're just gonna do the one pass per side. You can really see this thing glistening now. So you can see my reflection over top of it. Just take your middle finger out past the tip so you don't roll off. One of the best tips I have to offer. Something that helps me tremendously. See, just put your finger like that so it can't roll off the edge like that and round your tip. And if you guys are paying attention, you'll see that I'm marking my edge constantly throughout this entire process, even way after I find my angle, because that just allows you to see exactly what's going on. You know, sometimes, you know, what if, what if your knife shifts in the clamp somehow? Or what if your angle, um, the, the guide angle changes somehow? And then your, your edge ends up being junk. Even if it does look good, it won't be sharp because something changed and you weren't aware of that change due to not using the Sharpie. Um, there's a saying it that goes, the Sharpie doesn't lie when it comes to knife sharpening. Sharpie doesn't lie. So remember that. Now 
Now, the, a sharpener like this, it's called a guided system, but when it comes down to it, you are the one that's doing the guiding, okay? All this is doing is keeping a, all this is doing is maintaining a specific angle, um, holding your knife in place, sturdy, so that angle cannot change, or is at least not supposed to change. And, you know, the stones are doing the work of cutting the metal. But all this stuff can't work together in harmony without you. Your input is 100% necessary to complete this process and your results are 100% and your results rely 100% on how you use this and your results guys the results that you get are going to rely 100% on you and your guidance you guiding the stone and guiding the system um, you are the machine so anybody can do this it just takes time practice patience um, but it's, it's not difficult. One of the most helpful pieces of advice I've ever taken when it comes to sharpening is taking your time and being patient, not rushing through. Um, you know, all that stuff makes all the difference in the world. And also the not applying pressure part. Back in the day, I used to, you know, you would think I was trying to push the stone through the knife, but I've learned over the years that you should let the stone do the work. You are only guiding the stone. Let the stone do what it is intended to do. guys we are coming up on the final passes and no i'm not counting i just you know go off of what i see and whatever i feel like and i just go from there all right we'll do one flip One, flip, one, and one, and super light, super light, one, and out of the clamp Ugh. see what we're working with baby